In this video, we'll look at writing and balancing chemical equations. A chemist who carries out a chemical reaction in the laboratory needs to know how much product can be obtained from a given amount of starting material or a reactant. To do this, he or she starts by writing a balanced chemical equation. Chemical reactions are represented by chemical equations, which identify reactants and products. Formulas of reactants appear on the left side of the equation. Those of the products are written on the right. In a balanced equation, there are the same number of atoms of a given element on both sides. The same is true for a chemical reaction you carry out in the laboratory. Atoms are conserved. For that reason, we cannot do anything until we have a chemical equation and until we have balanced it. We start with a skeleton equation, an equation that shows the reactants and products. First, write the formulas of all the reactants on the left of the arrow and all the products to the right of the arrow. Use a plus sign to separate reactants if there's more than one reactant, and to separate products if there's more than one product. So let's look at an example. Liquid propane, which is C3H8, is burned in excess oxygen, producing carbon dioxide gas and steam. So let's start by writing the reactants, which appear to be liquid propane and oxygen. So we're going to say C3H8 plus oxygen, so it's important to remember that oxygen's O2, got to remember your Hofbrinkle, and then I've got an arrow, carbon dioxide we know is CO2, and steam is just water in the vapor state or gas state. Okay, so there's our skeleton equation. So we're going to take that skeleton equation and we're going to start adding some symbols. So some symbols we need to know are if you have a solid, you put an S, liquid is L. Okay, so we knew that propane, it said liquid propane, so that's going to be an L. Okay, G is for gas. Well, we know that oxygen is a gas. It said that carbon dioxide was a gas. And it said steam, which is H2O, gas. Another one we use in a little bit is aqueous. That means something that's dissolved in water. Okay. We also want to indicate if heat is added to an equation. Well, burning means heating in oxygen. So you can write that either with heat over an arrow or a little delta sign, which looks like a triangle. So we're going to add heat to this. Okay. We'll also see reactions where we add electricity. You just write electricity over the arrow or we use a catalyst. A catalyst is something that speeds up a reaction, and we write that over the arrow. All right, so we've gone ahead and we've added in the states and the heat. So let's look at balancing it now. All right, so we've got our reaction. But if you look, you've got three carbons on the left and only one on the right. So we balance by putting coefficients in front of things. So I need three carbons, so I'm going to put a three here. Okay, and then I look at my hydrogens and I have 8, so I'm going to put a 4 here, because 4 times 2 is 8. And then oxygens, I'm going to look, I have 3 times 2 is 6, and I have 4 times 1 is 4, so I have a total of 10 oxygens. So I'm going to put a 5 right there. Okay, that's so now we've written a complete balanced equation. We've got our states, we've got all our symbols, and we put our coefficients into balance. Let's try another one. Solid antimony is heated in iodine gas to produce solid antimony 3 iodide. Okay, you can try this on your own if you want to. So just pause the video and give it a shot, or we'll do it together. So antimony is SB, and it says a solid. Okay. We're going to heat it in iodine gas, so that's one of our Hofbrinkles, so it's I2. Okay, and I've got my arrow, and it says heated, so I've got a delta over there. And then antimony 3 iodide, so that's Sb3 plus and I minus, so SbI3. And it says it's a solid. So now we've done everything except balance it. Um, so the SBs look okay, but I've got two I's and three I's. 
Okay, so if I put a two here and a three here, now I've balanced my iodines. But now I've messed up my antimonies, so I'm going to put a two here. So I've written a balanced equation. Whoops. How about aqueous solutions of sodium iodide and lead to nitrate form an aqueous solution of sodium nitrate and a precipitate of lead to iodide? Again, why don't you pause the video and try to do this on your own, okay? And then flip the video back on and we can do it together. So sodium iodide is NaI. Now you know why you spent all this time learning how to write formulas. It says it's aqueous. That means we've dissolved it in water. And lead to nitrate is PbNO32. Okay, also aqueous. Got our arrow. And we're going to make sodium nitrate. So NaNO3. NaNO3 which is aqueous, and PbI2. So precipitate means it's a solid. So I've written my reaction. I've got my symbols in there. We just need to balance it. Okay, so the Na's look okay. The PB's look okay. But I've got one I here and two I's here. So I'm going to put a two here. But now I need two in front of this Na. And now I have two NO3s. It's easier to think of polyatomic ions as one thing. Two NO3s, and I've got two NO3s. So I'm actually all balanced. So a few notes on balancing. So for instance, if I have I2 plus Cl2 gives you iCl3, take a minute and see if you can balance it. Okay, and then we can do it together. So I've got two Cl's and three I's. So I'm going to put a two here and a three here. And I've actually balanced it. Now, could I instead say, you know what? I'm just going to say I plus Cl3 gives me iCl3. That looks fine, right? I've balanced it. I have the same number of atoms on both sides. Unfortunately, there's no such thing as I. It always exists as I2. And there's no such thing as Cl3. It exists as Cl2. Use coefficients in front of the formulas to balance the equation. Reduce the coefficients, but never change the subscripts, OK? Also, if I had balanced this and I had come up with something like this, plus 6 Cl2 plus 4 iCl3, it's going to look balanced. But if you look 2, 6, 4, I can reduce it back to 1 three, and two. So you always want to reduce your um, coefficients as quickly as possible, as much as possible. The last thing is, this isn't a rule. It just comes in handy pretty often. When you're having a little trouble balancing, start by balancing all of the elements except hydrogen and oxygen, and then balance hydrogen, and then balance oxygen. So for instance, this is a combustion reaction where heating something in oxygen. So I'm going to start with, I'm going to ignore the H and the O. I'm going to start with my carbons. I have eight, so I'm going to put an eight here. I have 18 H's, so I'm going to put a nine here. And then I have 16 plus nine is 25 O's. So what could I multiply by two to get 25? Well, I could say 25 over 2. And you might think, wait, that can't be legal. It actually is. You can balance in terms of fractions, or you can just take the whole thing and multiply it by 2. Okay? So you got this plus 25O2. All right, gives you 16CO2 and 18H2O. Really, either one is fine. And that's all there is to writing and balancing equations.